So generally, one of the ways to think about building a less polarized world is to have better models of other people. And there's a generally smart way that we can build in that direction, and that is understanding ourselves in relation to other people and being aware of the differences. So let me unpack this. One of the most fascinating discoveries of the past few decades is that polarization isn't always about facts or even identity. Sometimes it just comes down to this strong sense of morality, to the foundations on which we build our sense of right and wrong. But here's the thing you've probably noticed that it can be difficult or impossible to convince someone of your moral view, you both just see it differently. So my colleague, Jonathan Haidt, has studied this and gives a metaphor that captures this really well. He says, morality is like a tongue with multiple taste buds. Our tongues pick up sweetness, sourness, bitterness, saltiness, and umami. And in the same way, our moral sense comes with its own flavors, care, fairness, loyalty, authority, sanctity. Now, here's the key. Some people have stronger sensitivity to sweetness or to bitterness. And in the same way, different people emphasize different moral flavors. So speaking very generally, liberals tend to put the greatest weight on care, and fairness. Conservatives, on the other hand, spread their attention more evenly across all five, including loyalty and authority and sanctity. That means when a liberal and a conservative argue, at the heart of their disagreement is that they're tasting different flavors of morality. So let's make this concrete. Take the issue of immigration. A liberal might frame the moral question as one of care. How can we ensure that families are treated humanely? How can we protect vulnerable people who are seeking a better life? A conservative, on the other hand, might frame the moral question in terms of loyalty and authority. How can we protect the integrity of the nation? How can we enforce the rules fairly? Both of these are moral arguments. Both come from genuine ethical concern, but they're tasting different flavors, and so they end up talking past each other. Or take the debate over health care. A liberal might frame it primarily in terms of care and fairness. How do we make sure everyone has access to life-saving treatment? How do we reduce inequality in health outcomes? A conservative might highlight authority and loyalty. How do we ensure people have the freedom to choose their own doctors and plans? How do we maintain a system that rewards hard work and personal responsibility? Both arguments are just leaning on different moral flavors. Or look at discussions around school curricula. Liberals might focus on care and fairness. How do we make sure that students from all backgrounds feel represented? How do we teach history in a way that acknowledges harm and promotes inclusion? Conservatives might emphasize loyalty and sanctity. How do we preserve national traditions and shared narratives? How do we protect the core values that hold society together? Again, both sides are approaching the issue from sincere moral commitments, but they're sensitive to different moral taste buds. And this is what makes polarization so slippery, because when you're speaking from one set of taste buds, the other set can feel incomprehensible. To someone focused on fairness, appeals to sanctity can sound medieval. To someone focused on sanctity, appeals to fairness can sound naive. It's not that either side is blind, it's that they're tasting a flavor the other one barely registers. And you can see all of this in brain scanning. When people are asked to make moral judgments, questions of care activate regions linked to empathy, like the anterior insula. Questions of fairness activate networks associated with reasoning about equality and justice, like the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. But questions of loyalty and authority, these pull in areas tied to social emotions and deference to hierarchy, like the amygdala and orbitofrontal cortex. And 
sanctity, which is often connected with disgust, lights up the same region that flares when you smell something rotten. I mention all this to say that the way to understand moral foundations is not that these are abstract concepts, these are embodied experiences. They are felt in the body. And when two people debate morality, they are experiencing the world through different sensory lenses. History gives us lots of examples of this sort of clash. Think about prohibition in the 1920s. To its supporters, banning alcohol was a matter of sanctity and authority, protecting families, upholding moral order, and forcing discipline. To its opponents, it was a matter of fairness and care. Adults should be able to make their own choices, and the ban created more harm than good. The nation was split along moral taste buds, and the result was one of the most polarized eras in American social life. And today we see this in debates over climate change and vaccines and gun rights and reproductive rights. Each side emphasizes different moral foundations. Each side insists they are on the side of morality, and both are correct within their own moral framework. So what does this mean for polarization? It means that part of our problem is translation. If you're speaking fairness to someone who cares most about authority and social order, your words are not going to land. If you are speaking sanctity to someone who values care, your message falls flat. It's not enough to be moral. You have to speak in the moral language of your audience. There's a study in which researchers reframed arguments about environmental protection. To liberals, they emphasized care, protecting vulnerable species, preventing suffering. To conservatives, they emphasized sanctity, protecting the purity of nature, keeping the earth unspoiled. And what they found was that conservatives were more persuaded by the sanctity frame, while liberals were more moved by the care frame. Same issue, different taste buds, different results. When we recognize that the person across the aisle is not immoral, but simply tasting a different flavor, it opens a small space. It doesn't mean we're going to agree, but it means we can see the clash for what it is. Not good versus evil, but sweet versus salty. Of course, this recognition doesn't immediately solve everything. Our taste buds are stubborn. They're shaped by our culture, our upbringing, our religion, our genetics. They don't shift easily. But understanding our own taste buds and other people's can help us navigate polarization with a little bit more humility. Because one thing that should be clear to all of us is that moral battles are rarely won by shouting louder in your own language. They are won by learning to speak at least a little bit in the language of the other side. In other words, the recognition that while we may disagree, we're both chewing on the same world. We're just savoring it differently. 